In this video, I'm going to break down IRS form Schedule D into easy to use segments so that you know exactly what you're filling out the entire time. Coming up next on Holy Schmidt. Holy Schmidt. Hi everybody, Jeff Schmidt with deductions.tax and welcome to another episode. If you're not sure how to fill out IRS Schedule D and more importantly, which supporting forms go with Schedule D, you've come to the right place. So let's get right into it. IRS Schedule D is what we're talking about today. Now, Schedule D is the master form, and that means that other forms feed up into it. And most of those you don't actually need to know about, but there are three that we'll focus in on today. And I'll also talk about all of the others that are captured on Schedule D that you probably aren't going to use anyway. So let's start off with the forms that you're probably looking to fill out. The first one is Form 8949. Form 8949 is used to capture gains and losses on capital assets. So what are capital assets? They're things like stocks or collectibles like coins or bonds or art. These are all considered capital assets and they can go up or down in value. And this is the form that you use to capture that movement. Most of you will be using this form and only this form for the purposes of Schedule D, but we're going to talk about a few more that you could use. The next is for Form 4684, and this is for casualty and theft gains and losses. The next is your K-1, and this is a partnership form, a S-Corp form, or estates and trusts form to capture gains and losses held in the estate or trust. Now, what you're probably not going to use the following forms, but they are captured on Schedule D as well. That's Form 4797, which is property used in business. Form 6781, which is for contracts and straddles. If you don't know what a straddle is, don't worry about it unless you're trading commodities or other derivatives. It's probably not applicable to you. Form 2439, which captures undistributed long-term capital gains. And Form 6252, which captures installment sale gains on your tax return. So 4797, 6781, 8824, 2439, and 6252 probably don't apply to you. In fact, the single one that most likely does is Form 8949. By the way, I have another video on this on how to fill out Form 8949, so stick around to the end and I will provide a link to that video if you don't know how to fill this particular form out. All right, let's talk about IRS Schedule D. More than likely, you will be talking about stock sales as it relates to this form, which means you'll be filling out sections 1B, 2, and 3, and those come right off of Form 8949. Now, in Column B, you will put the proceeds from the sale of one or more stocks. So if you sold two or three stocks, you put the total for all of those stocks, the proceeds from all of those stocks, in Column D. And column E is your cost or your basis of those stocks. And again, if, you've had, if you have more than one, then you add all of the stocks together, and it's just one number. What's the total cost for all stocks that you sold within a year or less of buying them? C is an adjustment column. It probably doesn't apply to you. Oftentimes, it relates to a mistake that your brokerage firm made on the calculation of your basis, and that's just to fix that. And H, it relates to gains or losses of the sale of stocks. The next line is for line four, 4684, and that's for casualty and theft gains and losses. And that's just a net number. It comes right from the bottom of 4684. Line five is your gain from your K1. And again, that's a net number right from the bottom line of your K1. Six is a very important one. It is for capital loss carryovers, and it captures anything that will offset some of your gains this year. And really it relates to losses in previous years that you couldn't claim because you had more losses than gains. And so the IRS lets you roll those forward to this year and offset this year's gains with last year's losses or previous year's losses anyway. And then line seven is the net number. It's when you add up all of your gains and losses from each one of these lines, the net number is a net short-term gain or loss and that is 
the only number that really gets calculated for tax purposes. It gets taxed as ordinary income. Part two relates to long-term gains and losses, and this is for assets that have been held for over a year. Eight, nine, and 10 relate to form 8949 again, and again, that's for most of you, it's probably stock sales, but it could be selling your coin collection or your rare art, but for most of you, it's stock sales, and this is stock that you've held for over a year. Again, you put in the proceeds from the sale of one or more types of stock or one or more stocks that you've sold and you net that number. You put in the gain, the, the purchase price or the basis from one or more of the stocks that you sold, i.e. your purchase price. You probably ignore G again because that's an adjustment column and most, most of the time you don't have an adjustment. And H is the column for long-term gains or losses. Now, Long-term gains and losses are more favorable than short-term gains and losses. So if at all possible, if you have the choice between selling your shares one day before the one-year mark or one day after the one-year mark, I would choose one day after the one-year mark. So you get favorable tax treatment. 11 is for casualty and theft gains and losses, long-term gains and losses on casualty and theft proceeds. 12 is long-term gains from your K-1 partnership, K-1s or corporation K-1s, estates and trusts. We talked about that earlier. 13 relates to capital gains distribution. You'll notice that it's the only one, the only line in here that's not also up here. This is special. It relates to capital gain distributions from mutual funds or from real estate investment trusts, and this is an asset that the mutual fund or the REIT has held for more than a year. More than likely, if it's a capital gain from a mutual fund, it's a security of some, some type, like a stock or a bond. And if it's a REIT, it's probably a building that's been held for over a year. And so this is a long-term gain, and it really relates to just those two segments. Number 14 is for long-term capital loss carryovers from prior year. Like number six, which is offset against short-term gains and losses, number 14 is a capital loss carry, carryover that's set off against long-term gains. And so this is an important segment because it will, again, allow you to reduce your taxable income, but it's just slightly different because it's for long-term losses offsetting long-term gains. And number 15 is the net number of your long-term gains and losses. Now, gang, I'm going to talk about part three briefly because for most of you, it's a simple tallying exercise, but I'm going to talk about two points that are very confusing to you. The first is line 18, and that's the 28% rate gain worksheet. If you sold a collectible, art, coins, etc., then this might apply to you. It doesn't apply to stocks and bonds. And if you have sold qualified small business stock, and this is basically any, this is any business that has 50 million or less in revenue, then this segment might apply to you. Outside of collectibles and qualified small business stock, this is something that you don't need to worry about. And the other line is line 19 in section three, and this relates to the uncaptured section 1250 gain worksheet. And this relates to business property and depreciation on that prop property and how to calculate the gain based on several points, including those two. But again, it probably doesn't relate to you. So unless you have business property that you've sold, real, real property like real estate, then this doesn't apply to you. So everybody, that's it for Schedule D. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button below and notifications so that you get notified when we post our next video. We release them about twice a week. And finally, for, for those of you that need to fill out form 8949, this video here is for you. It's about a six minute video and it will make that form super simple. Thanks for watching.